Right. Hmm. Hmm. Right. 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 Yeah. I think now it's again. Uh, just one sir. Uh, you are not getting presentation. Uh, no, it's not a presentation. It is not a presentation. Otherwise, stop sharing. Close there, uh, just close and then reopen. Destroy the off of the button. In the button, I will. Just from it, just from it. Unless until Then it will not move. Thank you. 
actually the issue is ki Okay. Internally, it is coming, but actually, we have to get on online. Na? विंडोज के कैसे करके भी कास्ट कर सकते हैं हेलो <laughs> सर गोपीचंदर वि Since we are little late, we can straight away start our presentation. And 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 uh, I hope online uh, uh, we are having a display of our title slide. Uh, so only thing that uh, there is some spelling mistake is instead of institution of engineers we had mentioned institute. So anyway, now next slide has come up. Um, so what is our? Yeah, please. uh previous previous slide sir previous slide previous slide yeah this in this slide we have shown the evolution of railway signaling initially if you see on left hand side we had mechanical signals then we moved to uh color light signals then now we are moving to cap signaling what is cap signaling see signaling information is available to Uh, ground equipment and a uh, uh, next next slide please next slide ha huh. so uh, our signaling railway uh, like you know our railway driver or train pilot they do not have steering wheel like road vehicles 
okay so uh, they cannot select the route like uh, road vehicle drivers the route is set by ground person and through ground equipment and the safety or clearance of the route is conveyed to train drivers or train pilots by means of line side signals those signals which are situated besides the track now this information is available on ground at higher speeds what ha what would happen uh, our drivers will feel inconvenient to drive the train on by watching the line side signals so we have to transfer this information on board inside the train inside the locomotive and uh, display in front of train pilots in user friendly manner so that uh, uh, they can drive the train at higher speeds this is all about cap signaling in nutshell okay uh, next slide please so here in this slide so i need to see that because it's not moving here yeah, it's a, uh, so uh, so um, um, here we have compared two types of uh, cap signaling systems upper half and bottom half i was uh, instructed to just repeat uh, uh, and touch upon you know whatever we had learned in our first lecture so in upper half type of system if you see we provide uh, track transponders on the track uh, balis it is shown as balis it is connected to line side signal through a fail safe interface okay and when train passes over the balis it picks up the information displayed by the line side signal this is the way information is transferred from ground equipment to train these balises are uh, installed not continuously on all railroad ties or what we call as rail sleepers these are balises are you know situated let us say for few hundred meters apart 500 600 meters apart so that is why uh, it is able to communicate or transfer the information to on on board or train at certain spots only that is why it is not known as spot transmission based system it is one way information transfer from ground to train if you see bottom half portion in this uh, you know there are uh, tra again transponders on the track but most of the information is transferred through radio communication uh, see train passes over the uh, rfid tags installed on the track which are basically passive not connected with signal these tags are used primarily to uh, enable the train to know its location once the location is picked up then through odometry like how many wheels taking turn past that tag will enable us to know about exact or current location of the train so now uh, now on the basis of uh, this train location uh, determination now train is uh, continuously transferring the information about its location speed mode <laughs> mode of operation etc uh, to uh, station equipment through radio communication and station equipment in turn see station equipment in turn uh, um, uh, responds with the movement authorities like how far the train is allowed to go at what speed and all depending upon the information received from train so this is basically continuous information exchange type of system now i would compare here see upper type of uh, system or spot transmission system is easy to design and uh, bottom half is difficult to design Uh, but bottom half type of system has got some advantage okay uh, that is related to a uh, line capacity friendliness or operation friendliness and it is relatively much more safer as compared to upper half type of system so uh, china and uh, europe see the most popular train control system or cap signaling system world over is european train control system so europe and china started with uh, upper half type of system first level 1 etcs system is upper half type of system level 2 etcs or level 2 european train control system is bottom half type of system okay but indian railways we uh, 
uh, started uh, directly with radio based systems since we were a little bit lagging so in order to bridge the gap we started directly with radio based system uh, so it has got advantage as i told and particularly with respect to indian railways situation see i'll tell you indian railways has got around 70000 route kilometer uh, uh, um, um, on our track uh, on our network out of that 70000 only 10000 kilometer comprises these metro cities uh, erstwhile metros in fact uh, like uh, we called it golden quadrilateral golden uh, diagonal delhi kolkata chennai and mumbai if you see this a uh, six limbs these are constituting around 10000 kilometers so this 10000 kilometer out of 70000 kilometer this 10000 itself comprises of uh, more than half of our passenger as well as freight traffic so these sections are actually overloaded you can say over saturated and uh, had we gone for upper half type of system or spot transmission based system uh, we would have badly suffered uh, with the uh, line capacity because it actually reduces our capacity to carry the train traffic whereas bottom half type of system enhances the capacity of the train carrying so next slide please so i am proud to say that indian railways is one among you know few countries which they have you know indigenously designed a uh, system uh, um, uh, radio based system of their own so yeah here you can see um, as we have seen uh, this uh, particular system partly our part uh, it will this will be partly at ground partly on locomotive or train okay so station equipment has to communicate with the uh, on board <laughs> or uh, train equipment so this is just a glimpse of uh, kavach station equipment it gets the information about um, aspects of signal etc like how far the route is set how far the train can be allowed to go which particular route and all those information then some more information is required to drive the train for example gradient gradient plays very important role in train driving so that static information that also is stored in our uh, system so gradient along the path on which the train is allowed to go that also is sent to locomotive or train then uh, there could be some turnouts some weak bridges or some structures limiting the or putting the restriction on the speed on that particular patch so that information also is sent to <coughs> train so this information is uh, sent through the station equipment as you can see that station equipment is electronic embedded system and it is meeting the highest safety uh, requirement of railway industry that is called as safety integrity level 4 because our train drivers will start depending upon this system so it has to meet the highest uh, Reliable uh, ramps requirements, reliability, availability, maintainability, as well as safety. Safety is foremost. So uh, this is all about uh, Kavach station equipment. Now we can go to next slide, please. Ah, uh, so this is onboard equipment. Onboard equipment. We have got uh, uh, user-friendly display in front of uh, LP or local pilot. Here it is shown as. Please don't uh, try to you know see the labels. i'll just uh, explain you on board equipment or train equipment also is vital computer uh, which is again you know compliant to highest safety uh, requirements and uh, as you know that our uh, locomotives have driving cab on both sides so on both sides we will be having uh, display in front of the driver uh, user friendly display then uh, there will be one brake interface also see in cab signaling we will keep on telling the train pilot or driver that at what spot what speed to be followed well in advance but suppose uh, uh, our train driver inadvertently um, you know fails to exercise adequate braking then this system will automatically actuate optimum braking and bring down the speed and regulate the speed to the desired level 
whether it is non zero uh, low speed or to stop see you must have heard about uh, you know couple of accidents which are occurring on account of passing the signal at red or danger or overshooting or we call jumping the signals so if suppose driver is not uh, alert enough then this system will not allow the train to pass to signal at red or danger thereby it would prevent the uh, those kind of collisions also uh, risk all is you know uh, there are uh, antenna under slung to read the rfid tags on the track which um, have the information stored uh, about locations and all then um, we have got uh, some gsm connectivity for uh, you know uh, getting some authentication keys from key management server because as i told that um, um, we need to follow secure communication requirements uh, so then we have got G gps antenna gps antenna is for not for location it is for time sync purpose not for location location we uh, evaluate or assess through uh, our rfid tags and odometry so likewise uh, we can see next slide please uh, see this is the rfid tag which is installed on the track actually tag is this is fixture inside this uh, fixture rfid tag would be there it is very small uh, size fixture and uh, then uh, then that particular rfid tag is encapsulated with the ingress property 68 ip signal and then this is a fixture this is the way it is uh, provided on track and uh, on right hand side we may see the uh, rfid reader under slung to the locomotive next slide please so uh, now we have uh, we have already seen what is there in the station equipment what is there on the track and what is there on the locomotive now see all the locomotive information is reaching in uh, real time um, uh, basis to the stations so station whatever in, uh, information station is sending to train or locomotive as well as the information which locomotive is sending to station all that information is available at the station and all the stations are connected through ofc link to centralized um, operation center you can say uh, divisional control office mm, uh, so uh, in the divisional control office we can have uh, such kind of uh, you know display uh, in which uh, we can see the log data log we can find out the problems errors exception reports if there is any problem then we can have lot of statistics etc also so that is nms or network monitor system of kavach at divisional control office next slide please now here we can see like uh, um, the disp uh, you can see the display will be this kind of display will be there in front of driver uh, uh, one you can see right hand side in uh, we have shown the display and uh, here um, uh, basically this is a uh, convenient form of displaying the information train driver is not required to read the numerals uh, uh, he has to simply uh, get accustomed to the these bars and uh, speed dials and all pointers and all uh, basically as you can see uh, the right hand side there is one bar blue color bar movement authority bar okay it is logarithmic bar and uh, uh, the, the driver will become habituated and uh, he or she would be able to Uh, derive the information just by a blink of you know i and then uh, permitted speed and all uh, i will just tell you about this particular curve when the train speed is required to uh, be reduced to, due to some reason so that lower speed requirement ahead is known as target speed uh, if you can locate on that particular mm -hmm. uh, yeah so i uh, i am going bit technical so actually train is required to follow this green curve permitted speed curve is if the speed is little above that particular curve then it would be um, uh, warning would be given to driver and if it is excessively above that green curve then brakes also will be applied this is the you know basic basic methodology how this system works uh, since i do not have option of laser pointer it is remotely controlled ppt anyway thank you uh, so next slide please so as i have told that spot based cap signaling is detrimental to line capacity 
whereas radio based uh, signaling is capable of enhancing li line capacity we have already uh, discussed what mentioned in this slide uh, next slide please yeah you can see uh, this is the kind of display would be there in front of there actually it is functioning in field also uh, next slide please so here i have just made a very small comparison uh, see line side signaling can provide only limited information uh, as you can appreciate it cannot take cognizance of gradient or speed restrictions etc whereas in cap signaling we can store this information in the station equipment and station equipment can transfer this information to onboard or loco equipment now i am coming to the uh, bottom most point which is most important point uh, you will agree with me that when we are running the trains with a mixed uh, uh, type of traffic or mixed kind of uh, uh, trains with uh, different braking characteristics okay for example vande bharat vande bharat has got very excellent good braking characteristics whereas loaded freight train will have poor braking characteristics now uh, displaying the signal aspect on the basis of which kind of train is approaching is not possible with line side signal so line side signal cannot take cognizance of braking characteristics of the train suppose for vande bharat it is uh, able uh, it is allowed to show you know green signal but some other train uh, it is a uh, double yellow so to be on safer side line side signals will always exhibit double yellow uh, which is more restrictive than green so unnecessarily our vande bharat also will get a restrictive aspect because uh, from the point of view of safety we have to cover the uh, you know uh, aspect sequences as per uh, you know considering the train with worst braking characteristics this particular uh, you know constraint is avoided in cap signaling how come see in cap signaling the train knows its own braking characteristics so at safety spot sorry in identical situation uh, the permitted speed shown to vande bharat would be different than the permitted speed shown at the same spot to loaded goods train so this particular you know <laughs> feature would provide um, uh, line capacity benefits uh, next slide please uh, now here i would just discuss about kind of protections which are guaranteed and kind of protections which are not guaranteed by kavach see uh, uh, there are two categories of protections which kavach can provide one is pro protection against inadequate braking by the train pilot of the self train so these kind of protections are guaranteed i will give example for example protection against the passing the signal at danger so uh, it will with guarantee it could stop that kind of you know uh, uh, event and the level of protection also will be uh, 100% that will be guaranteed now there are other kind of protections also which you can see it is the bonus protections um like uh, suppose one um, there are uh, it is double line the two trains are running and one train has derailed and another train is yet to approach that particular spot then this system has got capability to generate sos message which which can be received by other train uh, approaching on the uh, adjacent track uh, see this kind of protection again as i told it is protection against unusual caused by factors external to the self train so these kind of protections are not guaranteed but these are of course bonus uh, you can say uh, kind of protections uh, mostly we are facing problems with signal passing at danger etc so those all will be covered next slide please see this is one example uh see uh, one blue train on right hand side you see uh, it is negotiating there are two tracks is shown in this diagram and from upper track track to bottom track it was uh, negotiating a turn out curve to turn out from uh, transiting from one line to another line so it was uh, midway uh, transition and uh, other red train was approaching from left you see signal number 32 so when this type of movement is going on signal number 32 has to be at red 
and it was actually at red. But the uh, uh, train, approaching train, red train could not control and it uh, was... And there, uh, this particular train, red train overshot or jumped to the signal number 32 shown here. And uh, as you can see, it met with the side collision and this was the consequence. So these kind of protect, uh, protection against uh, sped or signal passing at danger would be guaranteed. And uh, whatever, uh, this is, uh, you know, um, um, the, the contributing factor, particularly at higher speeds causing collisions. So this will be covered. Next slide, please. Here I have shown another incident. You see, there are two trains over here. One is... Uh, uh, this incident had opened, had happened on 4th August of uh, 2015. <clears throat> there is one, you can see blue push, blue train. Okay, it occurred first due to a uh, flash flood and uh, settling of track on account of that. So, first Kamiani Express derailed. Other train was nowhere in the picture. It was few minutes away on the adjacent track. So, after derailment of Kamiani Express, some of its coaches um, um, uh, fell on the other track, adjacent track, infringed the other track. But of course, coaches were of LHB or you can say modern anti-telescopic design. So there was not much uh, damage or casualties were not there. But after, immediately after a couple of minutes, by the time our people realized and uh, took action to prevent other train, other train came on the adjacent track and rammed into the derailed coaches, which caused a lot of, you know, loss of life also. So these kind of protections uh, also are there in Kavach. But of course, uh, you can say 90, 95%, but not guaranteed. And the uh, level of protection also is not guaranteed. You may appreciate that, suppose, had the train be, been mean, just near, then probably it would not have been possible to prevent even after giving SOS message. But in uh, many cases, when train is very quite, quite far away, then it is possible to stop these kind of accidents also. Next slide, please. Here, just let me discuss another scenario. Actually, uh, um, here you see the blue train from right hand side. It was to, supposed to follow a straight path. And as I told that in Kavach, we have got RFID tags installed on the track, like uh, let us say A1, A2, A3 kind of thing. So system knows that the <coughs> Sequence of tags to be followed is A1, A2, and A3. Somehow, which normally doesn't occur, uh, doesn't happen, uh, I will again tell. But somehow, suppose it picks up the wrong route due to fiddling of the system or some, you know, uh, unfortunate, um, as I can tell you, in Palasore, something similar happened. Uh, something similar. Train was uh, signaled to straight line, but it went to the uh, loop line. So the sequence of tag traverse will be B1, B2. Okay, as soon as B1, B2, uh, unexpected tags are traversed instead of A1, A2, A3, system would apply emergency brake. But again, let me clarify here. Um, few people, uh, few eminent people in our gathering over here offline uh, have quickly recollected this situation that what we had in our Balasor. But actually in Balasor, what was there? Uh, train of course, took the path, uh, loop line path, but it was at 28 kmph and the turnout was only of 100 meters. And here you see, uh, there was one full length um, iron ore train standing. Uh, immediately you can say like B2. Of course, Kavach was not available over there. So had Kavach been there at Balasor, even then this accident would not have been possible to be prevented because uh, by the time system applies emergency brake, etc., because of short distance and high speed, train, train would have uh, rammed into uh, that. But uh, you can say uh, you can see other probabilities also. For example, that iron ore train is not existing as I have shown in this slide, and some track people are working, let us say 500 meters away from uh, tank B2. Then with the emergency brake, speed would come down and train might stop also. People will get alerted. Not only this train, other trains also approaching to this particular spot uh, will uh, be stopped uh, with that SOS message. So what I'm trying to say, these kind of protections, which are against, uh, you know, 
uh, situation uh, situations caused external due to external factors those are not guaranteed but there is very good probability that those can be prevented of course balasor uh, uh, incident would not have been able to prevent because god has you know uh, um, unfortunately devised the situation um so next slide please uh as we have seen that in this particular system signaling information is available at ground railway signaling and it is to be passed to driver which driver doesn't have any steering wheel so but uh, you know so ground equipment also is important and onboard equipment also is important now you can visualize the condition that suppose uh, suppose we develop this system um, only with one industry partner then there would be monopoly so here we have uh, given one example all of you know in fact that's laptop of one make can uh, handle um, pen memory stick or pen drive of different makes because of interface protocols uh, being standardized being standard or, or open protocols you can say conversely uh, pen drive of uh, hp make would work with lenovo hp sony and toshiba so here also we have got onboard equipment and ground equipment so different makes of onboard and ground equipment should be possible to work that's why open protocols are required are needed okay to avoid monopoly and this poses further limitation because if we are if we are going for open protocols then our uh, sec uh, security of radio communication will be uh, you know of paramount importance Uh, it will be difficult to achieve with open protocols but we have already achieved and uh, next slide please and uh, our independent safety assessors also um, uh, have certified that our uh, radio communication is quite secure and these are those uh, uh, independent safety assessors who have evaluated european system uh, we have not compromised uh, that particular part so here i have just made one comparison of spot transmission and radio based transmit uh, transfer system radio based system is complicated and uh, difficult to design but of course it has got its own advantage so happy to share that our national atp is radio based coverage system next slide please and we have gone for it next slide please ha uh, uh, yeah yeah please so here we have shown like uh, how we started our development green uh, section is one oem pink is another blue is third oem any onboard any locomotive with onboard equipment of one particular make will seamlessly work in uh, yeah so so this is this is how we have done and we have done lot of trials over here now let me just give you update that uh, um, now uh, as i told that our gq gd route kolkata delhi mumbai chennai is most important route and here two limbs out of six limbs okay kolkata delhi delhi mumbai all together 3000 so <clears throat> our works are in progress in full swing uh, in this sections because here we have to go for 160 kmph speed so for achieving 160 kmph speed not only track and our rolling stock like wagons coaches locomotives are to be fit but signaling system or uh, also is uh, required to be upgraded and kavach cap signaling uh, with automatic train protection that is kavach is mandatory for speeds beyond or in excess of 140 kmph so soon uh, um, uh, you know that those works will be completed already targeted in 2024 most of them will get completed and then we will be uh, able to fulfill one of these prerequisites for achieving higher speeds uh, what i'm trying to say in nutshell that without kavach we cannot achieve run the trains at higher speeds uh, 160 kmph so kavach is uh, playing its role in, in uh, enabling indian railways to achieve this particular you know uh, thank you uh, next slide please thank you very much from my side
this is Can I talk for a few minutes? Sir, here is uh, my mother, Srimati Kanturu Gopichan. Thank you for Thank you very much. Can I talk for a few minutes? Yeah. Yes, please, sir. <clears throat> um, hello. Uh, my dear friends, how are you? Uh, Naidu, sir. Naidu, sir. Naidu, sir, I think wants to. Uh, Naidu Boginini. I think. Yes, Naidu I'm, I'm Naidu Boginini in start. Okay. Uh, how are you? Uh, <clears throat> Professor K. Gopi Chand taught me line communication engineering. And he used to use a two inch thick Bible for telephony and telegraphy uh, written by Atkinson. Uh, I studied up to intermediate in Telugu medium, and it was a nightmare for us to understand uh, line communication engineering with the textbook uh, of Atkinson, which is very, very complicated English. And all the time, Professor K. Gopichand used to tell us about ringtone. Uh, I never lifted any live telephone till that date, and I never know what how ringtone sounds. Then Professor K. Gopichand took us uh, to the real phone and showed us uh, the real telephone, how the sound uh, sounds, how the ringtone sounds. It was really great experience for us. <laughs> and after that, I pursued all my work in at and Lucent, Ericsson, um, on technologies like TDMA, CDMA, 3G, and finally on 5G technologies. Now I am working on AIML for the industry based on my PhD work at State University of New York at Buffalo during 1989-96. In other words, all my 40-year engineering career is based on line communication engineering taught by my professor, Professor K. Gopichand. I am really grateful to Professor K. Gopichand. Finally, I would like to thank you all for giving me this opportunity to address you all. Jai Hind. Jai Hind, sir. And uh, we really appreciate uh, your feelings and uh, gratitude towards Professor uh, K. Gopichan. And as you told, you know, this is evolvement and very fast evolvement over a generation. Uh, just to touch upon, uh, you told about multi uh, that uh, uh, ringtones. Ringtones actually, uh, see, you that was quite primitive. In telephone also, you must have seen DTMF or dual tone. Uh, multi frequency system actually what happens in that see initially we used to have telephones with a dialing type of system through finger we have to dial okay and it used to make and break electrical circuits then ringtone type of system came up multi frequency uh, in which what used to be there uh, like a, a combination of uh, uh, different frequencies well, suppose there are let us say uh, seven uh, two frequencies or seven frequencies, or let us say, a different combination of frequencies, then uh, we can find out. And then filters used to be there. So identify the combination of frequency and accordingly detect the particular, you know, uh, digit, which is dialed. 
So this had been extensively used from that era of analog signaling, sir. You are great wizard. You can appreciate now we have gone uh, to such kind of level, sir. It would be, uh, Kavach has got a lot of data transmission and that to real time. So to that extent we have reached, sir, and that to encryptions and a very secure or robust uh, you know, protection against uh, masquerading. Suppose, despite being, uh, you know, uh, designer, suppose I want to create sabotage, it should not be possible for even me to create sabotage. So those kind of security features are there. Uh, thank you very much, sir. With uh, uh, I just thought of adding uh, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Next query, please, sir. Okay, I think you Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. A Kalani Garu Matarandi. Namaste, uh, Namaste, everyone. Thank you very much for the seminar and um, it is very interesting to see how you are using wireless communication for uh, the train uh, signaling and uh, the method you are using to put the RFIDs on the tracks and uh, using the communication to the train itself to have the prevention of collisions and uh, to have uh, the speed ma maintained to manage the track direction is very good. And uh, you mentioned about the standards that are going on in the industry like GSMA and 3GPP and all of those. So I'm assuming you're doing 4G right now? Yes, okay. So that communication will become more and more increased as the 5G gets prevalent. And uh, the AI-based uh, communication that uh, is going in 5G advanced and uh, 6G, will be more interesting so because the autonomous driving and the self uh, uh, maintaining of the trains and the cabs is uh, very important so thank you very much for the uh, seminar and all the details i know you mentioned you were going into some technical details but all of us are engineers and my father was uh, in the electrical engineering and the communication. And uh, he would always teach all kinds of new subjects. So the people on the call, I can see that they are all experts in and have many years of experience in this. So, uh, I'm sure all of us will uh, appreciate it. And uh, this is being live streamed on YouTube, which means this seminar will be available for many others to view this, even if it is offline and not on this seminar directly right now live. So thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. Yes. yes. Let, let, let. Uh, 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 this offline house, there is one query uh, about coverage plan of Kavach on Indian Railways. Uh, so, before coming to that query, I would just, out of curiosity, people may be having some curiosity. Um, very nice um, issue touched upon by Madam about communication backbone. Okay. So, ma'am, uh, when uh, you have talked about and all, batteries go there. Uh, laptop batteries. So uh, here, uh, here um, 
मैम एक्चुअली वेन वी स्टार्टेड दिस प्रोजेक्ट एट दैट टाइम टू जी वॉज गेटिंग ऑप्सलेट एंड इंसिडेंटली फोर जी हैज नॉट बिकम हैड नॉट बिकम कमर्शियली अवेलेबल सो वॉट वी डिड बी सी नेसेसिटी इज मदर ऑफ इन्वेंशन सो वी डिवाइज अवर ओन कम्युनिकेशन अवर ओन कम्युनिकेशन बैकबोन विच इज नाइदर टू जी नॉर फोर जी एंड विच इज स्टिल वर्किंग ऑन दैट but we have to keep pace with international requirements and standards internationally um, you know uh, already lte has come up and then uh, in railway also railway industry also we are going to have frmcs uh, it is internationally we are going to future rail uh, you know mobile communication system so we are geared up and kavach is ready for migration to frmcs in future we are having proof of concept trial and readiness for that that is one part now here people wanted to know about uh, uh, coverage plan of kavach so let me tell you that see uh, uh, it is not a simple project uh, uh, pro as far as deployment part is concerned because you can <coughs> appreciate um, when we are deploying initial gestation period will be quite high some equipment to be provided in locomotive its configuration planning then station equipment we have to we have to capture gradient data then inter signal distances then rfid tags what data to be programmed in the tags and all those things then number of levels of testing would be required checking will be required so initially you will find that progress is bit slow but once you know it starts let us say from in, from from first day it may take one and a half or two years but progressively one after another when it comes up then it would be quite fast so, madam actually we are uh, 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 waiting for uh, you know our uh, this system to get commissioned this year uh, kolkata delhi why we are just observing and we are watching we have found that of late our there is quantum jump in the deployment so our uh, um, uh, this particular system has been already sanctioned for 36000 kilometers of the indian railways you can say all important lines so what we have taken up right start from our trial section of south central railway that is in the vicinity of sikandrabad and hyderabad region uh, sikandrabad is pioneer and uh, proud to say ki we have done r and d a trial in this uh, region particularly so apart from that uh, this 3000 km is our immediate you know uh, assignment which we are uh, uh, going ahead uh, uh, at good pace then remaining four limbs of gqgd as i mentioned is around 6000 km so we are ready uh, uh, with the you know going for that 6000 km more but we are just waiting for to some to come to some this stage 3000 km because it is one of the busiest section of indian railways now after that exponential growth would be there so optimistically uh, if i am you know asked within couple of years 5 to 7 you can say if we plan properly we can cover this 36000 kilometers um, over indian railways ma'am and uh, of course yeah, query very... was from your side yeah congratulations very nice innovation uh congratulations to indian people our team yes. uh, because uh, you are from us actually uh, like uh, Uh, you know our covid vaccine full initially it happens with every project humko log bolte the india can't do it then wo jo hai um, then at that time also i used to i'm ex ex isro person uh, i have worked in isro for four years so i know that initially there will be lot of opposition and uh, uh, and uh, there will be you know lot of and r and d uh, this is the success rate of r and d is quite less so i was uh, aware that what would uh, be going to uh, you know uh, uh, what would happen we do not know but of course with the god's grace and uh, with support of all we could achieve to some people thank you madam 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 thank you
Small cell technology business. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. Very specific query. May uh, Vijayanagaram? Yeah, come on. Come on. That, that, I think that falls on. Uh, I think that falls on that line, yeah. our diagonal. Yeah. So it is among 6,000. Uh, so it is next to upcoming priority, next yeah. priority. But already works are sanctioned. But of course, funds allocation will be, you know, wherever we are completing, so their funds are to be given. And of course, this is the interim budget right now, what we have had. So it would soon come. But first priority is Kolkata, Delhi, Mumbai, for which works tenders already awarded long back and works are in progress in full swing then as next priority sir Thank Thank you. 
just interrupting sir because i would not get opportunity yeah, yeah. i am thankful and grateful to uh, institution of engineers telangana center and particularly padja madam uh, for giving me opportunity and uh, to share with so eminent people and uh, all our audience please continue sir oh great also, uh, yes Mrs. Gopichand is speaking. Ah, so, Yeah. 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 Yeah.